openly uh, instead of doing so in more indirect ways. Now, that's a complex constitutional matter because the courts have determined that unlike undocumented immigrants, corporations are real persons under the law and in fact have rights that go far beyond persons of flesh and blood, including rights granted by the mislabeled free trade agreements. Now, these revealing coincidences elicit no comment showing that the law is indeed a solemn and majestic affair. The spectrum of planning is narrow, but it does allow some variation. The second Bush administration went far to the extreme of aggressive militarism and arrogant contempt even for allies. And it was harshly condemned for these practices even within the mainstream. Uh, Bush's second term was more moderate. Uh, some of the more extreme figures were expelled, uh, Rumsfeld, uh, Wolfowitz, and others. Uh, Cheney could not be expelled because he was the administration. Uh, uh, policy began to return more towards the norm. Uh, as Obama came into office, uh, Condoleezza Rice predicted that he would follow the policies of Bush's second term. And that's pretty much what's been happening. Uh, a, although uh, there's a different rhetorical style, which seems to have charmed uh, much of the world, uh, perhaps out of relief that Bush is gone. Uh, one basic difference between Bush and Obama was expressed very well by a senior advisor of the Kennedy administration at the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, Kennedy's planners, Kennett, the fashionable word is partner. Uh, Britain naturally prefers the fashionable word. Uh, uh, Bush and his cohort uh, addressed the world as our lieutenants. Uh, so in announcing the invasion of Iraq, uh, they informed the United Nations that it could follow U.S. orders or be irrelevant. Uh, and such uh, brazen arrogance naturally arouses hostility. Uh, Obama adopts a different course. He politely greets the leaders and the people of the world as partners and only in private continues to treat them as lieutenants. And foreign leaders uh, much prefer this stance, and the public is sometimes mesmerized by it. Uh, but it's wise to attend to deeds, uh, not rhetoric and pleasant demeanor. Uh, deeds commonly tell a different story, in this case, too. Now, the current world system does remain unipolar in one dimension, the arena of force. Uh, the United States spends about as much as the rest of the world combined on military force and is far more advanced in the technology of destruction. It's also, of course, alone in having hundreds of military bases all over the world and in occupying two countries in the crucial energy producing regions. Uh, here in these regions, it is also establishing huge mega embassies, each a city within a city a clear indication of future intentions. In Baghdad, the costs of this mega embassy are expected to rise from $1.5 billion this year to $1.8 billion annually in the coming years. Uh, the costs for their counterparts in Pakistan and Afghanistan are unknown. Uh, as is the fate of the enormous military bases that uh, the United States has established in Iraq. Uh, the global basing system is now being extended to Latin America. Uh, the United States has been expelled from its bases in South America, uh, most recently from the Manta base in Ecuador, but it has recently arranged to use seven new military bases in Colombia and it presumably intends to maintain the Palmarola base in uh, Honduras, which played a central role in 
Reagan's terrorist wars. Uh, the U.S. Fourth Fleet, uh, which was disbanded in 1950, reactivated in 2008, shortly after Colombia's invasion of Ecuador. Uh, its responsibility covers the Caribbean, uh, Central and South America, and the surrounding waters. Uh, the Navy defines its various operations to include counter-illicit trafficking, theater, security, cooperation, military-to-military -military interaction, uh, bilateral and multinational training. Uh, the reactivation of the fleet understandably elicited protest and concern from the governments of Brazil, Venezuela, and others. Uh, South American concerns have been aroused by a document from April 2009 of uh, the U.S. Air Mobility Command. It proposes that the Palenquero base in Colombia could become what's called a cooperative security location from which mobility operations could be executed. Uh, goes on to say that nearly half the continent can be covered by uh, military transport without refueling from this base. And that could form part of a global en route strategy which helps achieve the regional engage engagement strategy and uh, assists with the mobility route routing to Africa, which is part of the global system. Now for the present, uh, the Air Force says the strategy is to place the base at Palancaro uh, to use it only for uh, mobility on the South American continent, but it goes on to explore options for extending the system to Africa with additional bases, uh, all of which are to form part of the system of global surveillance, control, and intervention. Now, these plans form part of a broader policy of militarization of Latin America, uh, training of Latin American officers has sharply increased in the past decade, uh, well beyond Cold War levels. Uh, police are being trained in light infantry tactics. Their mission is to combat youth gangs and radical populism. And that term is one that's understood all too well in Latin America. The pretext is the war on drugs, but it's hard to take that seriously, even if we accept the extraordinary assumption that the U.S. has the right to conduct that war in foreign lands. Uh, the reasons why it's hard to take seriously are well known, and they were spelled out again last February by the Latin American uh, Commission on Drugs and Democracy, uh, led by former Latin American presidents, uh, Cardoso, Zedillo, and Gaviria. Uh, their report concluded that the drug war had been a complete failure and they urged a drastic change of policy away from forceful measures at home and abroad and toward much uh, less costly and more effective uh, measures. Uh, now, studies run by the U.S. government and others have shown that by far the most cost-effective way to control the use of drugs is prevention, treatment, and education. And they have also shown further that the least effective and most costly methods are uh, what are called out-of-country operations, such as fumigation and interdiction. Uh, the fact that the least effective and most costly methods are constantly chosen uh, while much superior ones are rejected, uh, over decades, that's enough to tell us that the goals of the war on drugs are not the announced ones. Uh, to determine the actual goals, uh, we can adopt a legal principle, uh, namely that predictable consequences provide evidence of intent, and the consequences are not obscure. The prog programs underlie counterinsurgency abroad, and a form of uh, limpieza social at home, uh, dispatching huge numbers of superfluous people, mostly black males, to penitentiaries, 
That's a neoliberal phenomenon that's led to uh, 